Amen? The second conclusion I made was this. I see dimly. Just, you know, I see the present dimly. But God sees the present, the past, the future, and even all of eternity, he sees it clearly. And all I can see is what's happening now. And even that, I'm seeing just part of it because I don't know why it's happening. I don't know how it's going to happen. I don't know what's going to end. I don't know how the end is going to be. So I see things dimly, but the God that I serve sees all things, even to eternity. You know, when the Bible says God is Alpha and Omega, you know what that means? It means beginning and the end. That means God has seen the beginning and God has seen the end. We can only see where we are at this point in time, but God sees the whole thing. And I had to be okay with that. Because I wanted to see everything before. And I got to a point where I realized, no, 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 no. I don't need to see everything. I serve a God who does. And he's got my back. Amen? Amen. So that's the second conclusion I came to. Third conclusion I came to was this. (laughs) God promised to make all things work together for my good. But some of those things are not going to be very good. You see, God didn't say he will make everything good. He said he will make all things work together for My good. That's Romans 8.28. God says he will make all things, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And I have to be cool with that. That there are going to be some things that come through that may not look good, but God knows how to make it good. (laughs) Amen? (laughs) Because that's who God is. And I have to be okay with that. God promised to make all things work together for my good, but some of those things are not going to be good. Some of them are going to be ugly. Some of them are going to be painful. Some of them are going to be negative. Some of them are going to be gut-wrenching. But I'm okay with that. Hallelujah. Number four, I have to agree that God is the potter (laughs) and I'm the clay. (laughs) I, I, you know, I, have always, I thought I was the, the, the main man and all of creation revolves around me. But I remember at that point in time, I had to say, God, you are the potter, I'm the clay. If this clay is mad, make it again. Remake it. Transform it. Take charge of this clay because I'm the clay, you are the potter. And guess what? You're going to have to come to the stage where you you believe that too. Because if you believe you are the potter, (laughs) you're going to be trying to make all kinds of things happen and you're not going to be able to change the way life is. Praise the name of Jesus. He's the creator. I am the creature. He's the manufacturer. I am the product. I had to come to that uh, agreement. I mean, it's not... uh, By the way, some of the things I'm telling you didn't just all happen in that year. It's been happy, I've been learning that over the years. I'm just, I'm just trying to put it into a short, shorthand for you to take away. Number five. I had to agree that my part is to keep asking God for what he promised me in his word, but leave the final decision to him. I had to come to the point where, you know what, because the truth is this, if, you start, if you're praying about something and that thing doesn't come to pass, if you're not careful, you'll stop praying. You'll say, oh, well, maybe God doesn't want to do, maybe God doesn't really answer prayers anymore. Maybe it's just all of these people, emotional people. Maybe we should, no, no, no. So what I decided to do is this, Lord, I'm going to keep, I'm reading your word and it's telling me that this is your promise. I'm going to keep on trusting that the word that you promised me is true I'm going to keep on asking for the things you said you are going to give me, but I'm going to leave the details to you. I'm going to leave the details to you. Okay, Lord, I I want you to protect my family, but I'm going to leave the details to you. (laughs) How you do that. (laughs) I'm not going to say, well, uh, please make my uh, daughter become uh, an accountant when she doesn't want to be an accountant, but I I want it for her. Make my son uh, an engineer because I'm an engineer. I want him to be like me. I'm not going to pray those kind of silly prayers. I'm just going to say, Lord, you know what's best for my children. You love them more than I do. So take care of them. Take care of them. Now, if they say to me, oh, I want to become an accountant, then I can pray that prayer. Lord, help them to be that accountant. But I'm not going to try and pray prayers to make God do what I want him to do to force my children to be what I want them to be. (laughs) You know those kind of uh, (laughs) prayers that we sometimes pray. Hallelujah. So what I'm saying is I will keep exercising my faith for healing. I'll keep exercising my faith for prosperity, 
for provision, for promotion, for all the things that God promised me in his word, but I'll leave the details to him. I'll leave the timing to him. I'll leave the method to him because I trust him to do what is best for me. Those are the decisions I had to make. I was probably just around 20 years old at the time when I had to start making some of these decisions. And I would leave, and I'll let God take care of the rest. And by the way, let me just say this maybe, and I'm not sure how accurate this is, but I really believe that if once I made that decision, probably 90% of everything I asked God for still came to pass the way I wanted it. But that 10%, I left it to him. I left it to him. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. And by the way, it's not just me. My wife and I are doing, doing this together now, but I'm just telling you from my perspective where I was. And I hope you embrace some of these because the moment I chose to embrace them, nothing life has thrown at me has ever made me doubt God's goodness again. All right? Nothing life has thrown at me. After this, other things have been thrown at us, uh, th- thrown at my wife and I. But none of those things have ever made us doubt God again. Why? Because he's God and we're not. (laughs) He's the potter, we're the clay. And you get to that stage in life, you're free. You don't have to make things happen. You don't have to try to force things. You don't don't have to try to, you know, (laughs) you don't have to try and change things you cannot change. Because there are many of us, we we get headaches because we're trying to change something that we can't change, that we have no power to change. And we just leave it all to him and be excited that he knows what's best for us and he will give us what's best for us. Hallelujah. (laughs) Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. And if we want to grow and continue to grow, then that's what we have to do. Now, uh, let, let let me just end with a couple of thoughts I want to have here. See, what surprised me after all of this and in the years that followed is I realized that when the devil knows that the challenges that he throws at you do not face you anymore, you know what he does? He leaves you alone and goes and finds someone else who is still worrying, who is still anxious, who is still pulling their hair out, who is still stressed. Because he wants you to keep on being stressed until you die. I mean, that's it. That's his plan. You know, if you can get him out of here quickly, then let's do that. Let's, let's give them more worry. Let's give them more anxiety. So I realized that Satan stops wasting his time on you when he knows he no longer has you under his hands. When he knows that you refuse to worry when you should be worrying. (laughs) But you refuse because you put your faith and trust in a good God. Amen? He leaves you. Another thing I noticed was this. That the challenges and the setbacks that we faced made us better ministers of the grace of God. You just become better. You You become more empathic. You can empathize with people because you've been there. You know how it feels. You know, there's some people, they, they, because they've never gone, they've never had any challenges in their lives. They think, you are guys, the reason why you're having challenges is because you don't have any faith. Or because you are sinning or because you're doing something against God. But when you've gone through it and you know you didn't, have, you didn't do anything wrong to go through it, guess what? It just humbles you. So, so these challenges make us better ministers of the grace of God. It makes us more authentic. It makes us more humble. We're not walking around looking for someone to carry our briefcase all the time because there's no need to do all of that. (laughs) Amen. And here's another thing I discovered, that if God allows a challenge or a setback to come your way, he has already equipped you to handle it. He's already equipped you to what? To handle it. You say, how do you know that? Well, because he said so himself. So 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13 is the, is the scripture I want you to look at. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. Look up, listen to what it says. It says, no temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. The word temptation there actually means trials and setbacks as well. No trials, no setbacks, no temptation have overcome you that is not common to man. But God is faithful. God's, that, that's it. God is faithful who will what? Not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able God will not allow the trials and the tests to be beyond what he has equipped you to handle. Oh, that's very freeing. Because that means when something starts to happen, do you know what I say? I can handle that. I can deal with that. I've got what it takes. The grace of God is upon my life to handle that situation. And that's how you and I are meant to think. Because God said it here. He says, he is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with the temptation will also make a what? 
a way of escape that you may be able to deal with it, to bear it, to handle it. Oh, how freeing is that? So the next time something knocks at your door, instead of pulling your hair out and getting all anxious and saying, just say, I can handle that. I can deal with that. I don't know how, but I can deal with it. <laughs> I don't have the wisdom on what to do yet, but I know that God has said that nothing is going to happen to me that I can't handle. So I'm just going to trust God that give me, give me 24 hours, I'll know what to do. Maybe if I don't, if I don't get the answer in 24 hours, 48 hours. <laughs> if 48 hours is not enough, okay, three days. <laughs> All right, a week. But I'm going to find a solution because God said I can handle it. Look at somebody and say, you can handle it. Mm -hmm. So just say all those things that make you worry, you can handle it. You can deal with it because God has already equipped you to do so. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Can I get a weakness in the house? Has there anyone, has there been, is there anyone in the house when something happened, you thought you couldn't handle it, but three weeks later, you've, you've handled it and it's gone? It's behind you? Anyone ever? Yeah, I think I get weakness in the house there. Anybody else that that has ever happened to? That it, when, it came, when, it, when, when, the, when, when the post, when, the, when you open the letter, you go, know, oh, I'm dead. <laughs> but you didn't die. <laughs> and, you, and you're still here today. And that thing is far behind you. Why? Because God equipped you to handle it. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You can handle it. I said you can handle it. Amen. I mean, we should, make, we should make a song about that. I can handle it. I can deal with that. I can handle it. Yeah? Yeah? Handle it. Hey, yeah. handle it. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Handle it. I, I don't know. We should find some. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Praise, the, Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And you know what? The saints of all knew that. Put your hand on your heart and make this confession. Say, say this after me. Say, I acknowledge, I acknowledge that the trials, the setbacks, and the challenges that I go through may be very painful. But if I keep trusting God, they will come and they will pass. Okay, let's say it in the King James way. They will come to pass. <laughs> Amen. They will come and they will pass. Amen. They will come and they will pass. Hallelujah. Why? Because my life is completely secure in your hands. My, my life is completely secure in your hands. The Bible says in, in, in Psalm 30 verse 5, it says, Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. I can handle this. I may, I may have a bit of pain at night, but in the morning I'll be joyful. That's what the scripture says. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the name of Jesus. And let me finish with the scripture, Romans chapter 8. Very powerful scripture, but I want you to just let's join, join me and read it. Romans chapter 8 verse 31 to 32, Romans 8, 31, 32. It says, what shall we say to these things? If God, what? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely, 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 what? Give us, how many things? A, a, a few things? Just enough for yesterday? No. no. He will give us how many things? All. All things. Look at verse 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulations? Everybody say no. no. Shall distress? No. Persecution? No. Famine? No. Nakedness? No. Peril? No. The sword? No. Facebook? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Instagram? No. None of these things can separate us. Look at what verse 38 says. For I am persuaded. Everybody say, I'm persuaded. That neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depths, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Nothing shall separate us from the Lord of our God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Yes. Thank you, Lord. And you have to know that. You have to know that. Say when you say, dear Lord, give me the grace to know that you are sovereign and I'm not. That you, are, that you see the past, you see the present, and you see the future. Clearly, 
and I do not. not. Give me the grace to know know. that everything that happens to me, the the good, the the bad, bad, and the ugly, ugly. will work together together for my good good. because you love me more than I can love myself. myself. Amen. That's true. And say, dear Lord, Lord, give me the grace to know know that that nothing can separate me from your amazing grace and your amazing love because you are the potter and I'm the clay and I'm good with it. <laughs> amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I, 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 just, sensed, I just sensed as we, as we close today that there may be someone here who just needs restoration. You know, Satan has taken some things from you and maybe it's worried you for years and years. But I just really sense that the Lord wants to heal you and restore you and restore to you the things that the canker worm and the palmer worm and the caterpillar and all of those horrible demonic things have taken from you. He wants to restore it to you today in the name of Jesus. I declare over your life that the things that have been stolen will be restored to you in the name of Jesus. I said the things that have been stolen from your life will be returned to you in the name of Jesus. You know, Job lost his children, but God restored that. 